in the headlines. Independent National Electoral Commission threatens lawsuit after People's Democratic Party's rigging allegation. Zamfara Resident Electoral Commissioner assures safety of sensitive materials distributed across the state ahead of March 18 governorship and assembly elections. Terrorists invade Kaduna community, kill pastor's son, kidnap wife, three others. And on the foreign scene, three dead, 34 missing in Gabon ferry disaster. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. The Independent National Electoral Commission has threatened legal actions against the People's Democratic Party and others over unsubstantiated and libelous allegations against it and its chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu. The Chief Press Secretary to INEC Chairman, Rotimi Lawrence Oyekomi, gave the warning on Friday night in Abuja. The PDP earlier on Friday at a press conference in Abuja accused Yakubu of rigging the February 25th presidential and National Assembly elections, adding that the INEC boss is also planning to rig the March 18 governorship and state assembly elections starting with the reconfiguration of the bimodal voter accreditation system. However, Oyekomi said the latest call by the PDP, just like it did previously for the resignation of Mahmoud Yakubu as INEC chairman, is misplaced. According to him, the PDP also did not give the evidence to prove its claims that Yakubu sabotaged the uploading and transmission of results from polling units. Justice Emeka Nguite of Federal High Court Abuja on Friday held that only the Independent National Electoral Commission is empowered by law to determine the mode of collation and transmitting elections results. In a judgment, Justice Nguite stated that only INEC has the prerogative to direct how the polling unit presiding officer shall transfer election results, including the total number of accredited persons and results of the ballots. Justice Nguite further held that the collating and transferring of election results manually in the 2023 general elections cannot be said to be contrary to the relevant provisions of the Electoral Act. The judgment was on a suit filed by the Labour Party with INEC as the sole defendant. The party had prayed the court to declare that INEC has no power to opt for a manual method other than the electronic method provided for by relevant provisions of the Electoral Act 2022. It urged the court to issue an order directing INEC to comply with the Electoral Act on the electronic transmission of results in the general election. In the judgments delivered on January 23, 2023, Justice Nguite held that the plaintiff misconstrued the provisions of the law and proceeded to dismiss the suit. The resident electoral commissioner for Zamfara State, Saidu Barbara, says the commission and relevant stakeholders have taken record of the sensitive electoral materials which the commission had distributed to the 14 local government areas of the state before the postponement of the election and consequently directed the security agencies to secure them in the local government areas. Barbara stated this while answering questions from journalists on the security of the sensitive electoral materials which have already been distributed across the state. The report. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Zamfara State had last Wednesday commenced the distribution of sensitive electoral materials to the 14 local government areas of the state ahead of the governorship and state assembly elections earlier scheduled for Saturday, 11th March. The state's resident electoral commissioner, Saidu Barbara, said the materials had arrived the 14 local governments of Zamfara State before the commission announced the rescheduling of the elections to 18th March, adding that he had directed security agencies to secure the electoral materials in those local government areas. Thank you. Uh, 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 it is correct that um, the elections have been officially uh, rescheduled now to take place on the 18th of March 2023. You are also right that yesterday, uh, Wednesday 8th of uh, March, we started the process of transporting sensitive materials 
from the Central Bank to the State uh, uh, branch. Indeed, we loaded all the materials to all the 14 local government areas of the Central State. And of course, with us yesterday were the party agents, all the party agents, mutinous, materials, and numbers, and so on and so forth. He revealed that the commission held meetings with the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, as well as head of security agencies and paramilitary in the state to review the presidential and national assembly elections and strengthen preparation for the governorship and state houses of assembly elections with a view to ensuring that it builds on the successes and address the challenges faced in the last election. Other forms of uh, uh, arrest uh, throughout the last uh, many years. In spite of that, during the presidential election, we were able to, to deliver. We were able to hold the elections in all, each and every local government, each and every actually polling unit in the United States. We, we, we had uh, declared results in all the constituencies. That is, in the presidential, we had declared the results, which we eventually took to Abuja and we also delivered our own results. Barbara called on electorates and stakeholders to become and come out in large numbers on the 18th of March and vote for candidates of their choice, stressing that the rescheduling of the poll was beyond the Commission's control. In politics, Labour Party in Taraba State has disowned evangelist Philip Munlip's endorsement of People's Democratic Party governorship candidate Abu Kefas. The chairperson of the party in Taraba State, Esther Johnson, and the gubernatorial candidate, Joel Enlami Ikenya, as well as members of the Presidential Campaign Council in the state, told newsmen that Philip Munlip is a chieftain of the party and as such cannot endorse anyone on behalf of the party. We call on all the Tarabans to disregard such endorsement as it is just imagination of a desperate man who wants to deceive, mislead, the, who wants to deceive and mislead for personal benefit. For emphasis, the Labour Party is fully prepared to go into the contest for governorship and state house of assembly election come to 18 that march 2023 members of the public are therefore enjoyed to be weary of such characters of their prayer briefing sponsor prayer briefing they did say that uh, money was given to me that i i sabotaged it all be and I'm very happy that you people are people who always keep record. You know how my zone produce votes for Peter B. I could have sabotaged Peter B in Central Zone and Northern Zone and produce massive vote from Ukari and the Central District. I just want to say some are there, there are more. Some are there for their personal benefit. We, we are for new Nigeria and we are for new Taraba. Nasarawa State National Rescue Movement governorship candidate Abu Bakar Sambo has denied media reports that he has stepped down from the race for the People's Democratic Party candidate David Umbugadu. The NRM candidate made clarification during a press briefing in Lafia. He explained that the news report is not true and he remains the authentic candidate of NRM in Nasarawa State. My ambitions and have stepped down to the gubernatorial candidate of DDB or of the Gadu. I would like to state categorically and for the record that this is not true. Let me clarify that I am having some remain not only the authentic but also the acceptable candidate of national resource movement in the state. 
the, the news is not only fake, but also um, unfunded and vicious being spread by politicians who had desperate to achieve their political goal through whatever means possible. I wish to, to also state that I have been approached by various leading political parties in the state and the possibility, possibility of withdrawing from the race and to support their respect candidate in the following, following for coming to the three gubernatorial and state assembly election in the state. Moving to security, Karimbu Kahugu Community in Leri local, uh, local Council of Kaduna State was on Friday thrown into mourning and confusion as suspected terrorists invaded the area. The gunman killed the son of a Baptist church resident pastor in the community, kidnapped his wife and three others. The vice chairman, Kahugu National Development Association's Peter McAdis, who confirmed the incident said the assailants invaded the village and went straight to the clergy's residence. The police public relations officer of Kaduna Command, Muhammad Jaligay, could not be reached at the time of filing this report. Violent attacks and criminal activities were at their lowest ebb in the last few months leading up to the presidential and national assembly elections. But well, the question many asked is whether the frequency of violent attacks reduced drastically or because media attention shifted to the election and the attacks were underreported. However, a security expert attributes the reduction of attacks to the effect of the Naira redesign policy and focus on the 2023 general elections. The report. There has been a decline in the rate of criminal activities such as kidnapping, murder, burglary, fraud, terrorism, insurgency and secessionist violence in the country as political activities are given more priority and the cash crunch brought by the NIDA redesign policy according to residents making it difficult for easy operations of criminal elements. Experts say that the aim of the policy regarding crime reduction is being achieved despite experiences of cash crunch on the people. A sustenance of the policy and INEX conduct at subsequent polls will guarantee more peace and stability. I'm sure in the past two months or so, you hardly can hear of kidnap except a political kidnap. You know, there are different types of kidnap. You know, the people who go for economic reasons to get money and the people who go to kidnap their political opponents. So those ones are targeted. But for the regular uh, economic uh, kidnap, is on the decline. I can remember vividly um, some areas we are having um, constant robbery um, before the policy. But now, I think it's, um, since the introduction of the CBM policy, um, there is this um, reduction. It has you know, drastically declined. It has reduced to some extent. The way the usual demand for ransom is not as reduced because where is the money? The money is not under in circulation. And even if if, if, if you have to pay this one sum, you have to, it will be through the banks and it can easily be traced. On sufficient reporting of these incidents, experts say the media does its part, but focus and expectation is more on political activities. Mostly what we are talking about now political activities. You wake up in the morning, it's election, election, election. Everybody talking about election, manipulation of the processes and all what have you. So. It, it's it, that's what is trending. So, but, but that is not to say that when there are criminal activities, they shouldn't be reported to. Mike Ejofo says, for peace to continue to reign in the country, the Naira redesign policy must be maintained, and transparency in the conduct of the state elections must be more credible to avert any uprising. The peace and stability in this country after the election lies in the hand of INEC. So they must be serious, they must take this very serious to ensure. Nobody is interested on in who wins the election. But if the process is fair, credible, transparent, people will not worry. He said security stability is a collective responsibility of everyone that must be given priority, especially by security agencies and government at all levels. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. 
You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Curbing illegal refinery in Rivers. Stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Uh, you're still watching Trust News Update, a recap of our top stories. We told you that Independent National Electoral Commission threatens lawsuit after People's Democratic Party rigging allegation. You also heard that Zamfara Resident Electoral Commissioner assures safety of sensitive materials distributed across the state ahead of March 18 governorship and assembly elections. Moving to other stories, the Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Akin Abayomi, says 32 patients have been discharged following Thursday's collision of a train and a staff bus in the Keja area of the state. Abayomi, who addressed journalists at a press conference at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital on Friday, said a total of 102 casualties were recorded. According to him, the number of casualties or fatalities still stands at six, while 19 victims have been discharged from La uh, Lagos University Teaching Hospital. He said the accident and emergency center at Old Tollgate and eight from Orile Agege General Hospital. He added that 256 units of voluntary blood was received on Thursday from Lagos State residents, while 40 units of blood had been transferred from the victims on Saturday. Abayomi said 25 of the less severely injured were transferred to Bagada General Hospital, Lagos Island General Hospital, the Tollgate Accident and Emergency Center, and the Aurelia Gege General Hospital. Two 20-feet containers on Saturday morning fell along the Lagos-Badagri Expressway in Lagos State. The Lagos State Traffic Management Authority confirmed the report in a statement posted in its Twitter page. LASMA noted that personnel were on the ground managing the situation while effort was on to get the impediments off the road. Containers falling on Lagos roads have been rampant in recent times, with some situations claiming lives and causing serious traffic. Early on Friday, a 40-foot container fell in the Ago Palace Way area of the state. The incident was the fifth of containers that fell in different parts of the state on Friday. Nigeria's Security and Civil Defense Corps in Rivers State says it will continue to wage war against oil theft and economic sabotage by elements who are bent on undermining the economic growth of the country. NSCDC Commandant in the state, Michael Oga, said this at an illegal local refinery at Otamiri Eche, Eche local government area of Rivers State. The report. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has uncovered an illegal local refinery at Otai Mirieche, a local government area of River State, which sells crude from OML 17 fields operated by Hires Holding Oil and Gas Limited. NSCDC Commandant in River State, Michael Oga, lamented that the command is employing new strategy of operations by illegal oil thieves. Oga explained that for the eagle eye of the command and the sustained intelligence gathered from informants, it would have been difficult to uncover the illegal oil bunkering activities ongoing in such a remote part of the town. So, and this 
product here is tapped from the pipelines of HHAG company, HHOG company, the tap from the pipeline. That, that in the process of uh, consulting, they have not started the refining yet. So based on based on credible information uh, by the company, the company briefed us on what is going on. So we came to safeguard the place and also we are going to destroy the this illegal refinery. August 7th investigation is ongoing to unravel the owners and sponsors of such a gigantic illegal refinery in the area. He also warned oil thieves and operators of local refineries in the state to either relocate or face the full wrath of the law. We were not able to arrest anybody, but we are still investigating to know the owner of this parcel of land who may have allowed them to do this kind of business. But we know that those who are doing this business, they are not the owner of this land. So we are going to trace the owner of the land, so I'll be able to, to locate the owner of the business. You can see they have about three boreholes. You know how much it costs to, to, to sink one borehole? And there are three here with all these containers where they are storing the product. We know that this is a big business. Because this one, we are going to stop them. We are not going to allow them to operate. An explosion from a crude oil tapping point has killed at least 12 people last Friday in Remuepe community, Omohua, local government area of River State. The National Population Commission says it will generate quality data that will meet international standards in the 2023 population and housing census. Director of Public Affairs of the National Population Commission said this in an exclusive interview with Trust TV. Nigeria is set to conduct a national population census. But unlike previous headcounts, the 2023 edition is expected to be digital without the use of papers. As you know, this census is going to be digital. We have, recruit, I mean, we have received uh, the personal digital assistant that we're going to use for the exercise. And right now, those personal digital assistants, which will be used to collect information on the feed, they are being configured in such a way that will make the census process very, very smooth, transparent, and error-free. But do Nigerians think this can be achieved? ANEC emphasized and gave us full assurance that there's going to be electronic uh, upload of the results. You and I know how it ended or how it's panning out. So uh, for now, I cannot say they will succeed 100% because of that experience. But it's another uh, thing to their advantage to improve on their own technology. No, they can't deliver because I know before when they are doing census, they used to go to houses from one room to another, counting how many children, how many men, how many women, how many, in fact, everybody are counting. But going digital without counting one by one, you, they will know how many we are in Nigeria. Yes, it can work if they will be faithful to what they have said. Because in the last election, the INEC chairman have given us assurance that beavers will work. But at the end of the election, we know what happens. And the outcome is being contested in the court of law. If they will do what they say according to their promise, it will be more better. They will know the actual number we have in Nigeria. And what lesson should MPC learn from INEC? I've had complaints or issues or concern raised that INEC adopted technology and uh, perhaps maybe it didn't achieve the intended purpose or as much as the top. Well, and MPC will also do it whether we're going to have the same result. Uh, first, we must get it clear at this level, we cannot run away from technology. Of course, we must also recognize the fact that technology also has its own problem. But the type of technology that will be adopted by MPC, you know, I can speak for that. I don't know the details of the beavers used by INE, but I know that our own processes, we have tested it over time and we're sure that it's going to work. The Commission, however, urged Nigerians to assist the MPC achieve this feat by rendering help to the census staff and give accurate data while making themselves available for the headcount. Martia Umar, Trust TV News, Abuja. 
Moving to business, the Naira on Friday lost to the dollar as it exchanged at 461.5 Kobo. That's 461 Naira.50 Kobo at the investors and exporters window. The rate represented a decrease of 0.11% compared to the 461 Naira for which it exchanged to the dollar on Thursday. The open indicative rate closed at 461 Naira 50 Kobo to a dollar on Friday. An exchange rate of 462 Naira 44 Kobo to the dollar was the highest rate recorded within the day's trading before it settled at 461 Naira 50 Kobo. The Naira sold for as low as 446 Naira to the dollar within the day's trading, while a total of 82 uh, 82.56 US dollars, US million dollars, was traded at the official investors and exporters window. On the foreign scene, the number of people believed missing in a ferry disaster off the coast of Gabon has climbed to 34 following a reassessment, with the death toll also rising from 2 to 3. Authorities say at least one child and two adults have been found dead since the Esther miracle. A mixed-use freight, a mixed-use freight and a passenger vessel that travelled between the capital Libreville and the oil town of Port Gentil sank in the wee hours of Thursday, not far from the coast. They added that the number of passengers and crew aboard the ship was initially believed to be 151, but the figure was revised upwards to 161 on Friday evening without explaining how the 10 other missing people had been left out of the initial count. Three more people have also been rescued from the wreck since the initial tally given on Thursday afternoon, though authorities did not specify the circumstances in which they were found. With currents strong in the Gulf of Guinea, where the ferry went down, the chances of finding more survivors or even buddies after the disaster is dwindling. And finally, in sports, Ayimba for Chukwe Mecca Obioma has won the Nigeria Premier Football League Player of the Month award for February. Obioma scored four goals in the month, including two against shooting stars at the Ayimba International Stadium, APA. The striker is currently the top scorer in the NPFL with seven goals. It's the second time the former Golden Eaglets gaffer will be winning the award this season. Insurance won three and drew two of their five matches last month. The Benin Arsenals is the only team yet to taste defeat in the NPFL this season. And with this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Hussein Usman. Thanks for watching.